I didn't know that Obama had playlists until that, and I saw his tweet. It's like, I've been dying to put this out, this playlist out, and it was, it was cool. It's like, wow, that's a subtle sort of influence we may be accidentally wielding in the president's ear, you know. At the end of the day, that song is about, and music is about, feeling some sense of liberty to be a little bit more yourself, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's a good influence to have over anybody, including the president. Always a good song to play on stage, yeah. Especially, because we're touring and we're always, we don't have a home, you know, actually. I mean, we do, but we're not there. We're on the road. And the, old, the best part of the day, easily, I mean, really, I really mean this, is when we're on stage. The rest of the time, I, I'm in a bus right now that's not tall enough for me, so the whole time I'm in the bus like this. I, we sleep in these tiny bunks that are literally as tall as me. Um, we get usually mediocre food when we're on the road. It's not home, but on stage, that's home. And so when we sing that song, and I say home is whenever I'm with you, I, I really mean it. And I think we all really mean it. And when we're looking at the audience and telling them that. I really could say 100%. We've never been better as musicians. And we've never played better together on stage and I've never been freer than I am on stage now and that's really what our whole thing is about is that that feeling on stage you know? I think at the end of the day we're still pop music and by that I just mean verse, chorus, verse, chorus. You still have that form of the chorus that is meant to be repeated. And, you know, so there's that restriction and constriction that we still sort of abide by, but not entirely. This, this album, there's a song called Uncomfortable that really doesn't have a chorus. It has a refrain, but, you know, poems have refrains, you know. The first band I had was a rap group. And then I got totally disinterested in music, you know. So I was just making stuff, you know. And it happened that I ended up making stuff that I could rap on. And I've, I haven't rapped in a long time because uh, I didn't have enough to say that would fill up all those bars, you know. There's so many words. And I don't want to rap bullshit and just talk shit and come up with rhymes for no reason. So I just didn't. But then lately, all of a sudden, I had a lot to say, and so it started coming out that way. So it's kind of fun, yeah. In a totalitarian state, you get stuff done maybe a little better. I was watching this documentary about the Olympics in China, and they said, oh my god. It was just, everything was like clockwork. But they were, the people were also being like whipped basically into shape and, and, and the threat of jail or prison if you didn't. So we, as a band, might get things done a little more slowly than if there was like full-blown dictatorship. But in the end, what you end up with is a melange of tastes and beauty that you wouldn't end up with otherwise because everyone feels like they can contribute. And I think that's the, the key. Come dance with me Over murder and pain Come set you free Over heartache and shame 
I think it's that. I think it's that combination of of darkness into joy. Because if you just have the joy, you're not explaining how, what the journey is to get there. And if you're only singing with sort of that in mind, and you're not allowing yourself to be exposed or embarrassed or in pain um, before you get there or in the mix while you're there, then I don't know, you may be a more enlightened being than I am, I don't know. But you may also not be having um, or allowing yourself to have or expose yourself to the, the human experience, which is the sense of foreverness combined with death, or the sense of pain with the knowledge of joy. Um, you know, and I think that that soup is what our band is about. There's this moment at Bonnaroo, which is this festival in the States, and it's on YouTube. And I was going out collecting stories from home. And uh, going through, I went through about five stories, and they were all okay. But I had this feeling that something else, there was someone else in the audience. And finally, I saw all these people pointing at their friend. And I went up to him, and I gave him the microphone. And he said, I don't know if you rec recognize me or not, but about a year and a half ago, you all came to my hospital, and I was about to get a blood transfusion for a, or a bone marrow transplant. And uh, you guys came and you sang some songs and it was my second time and last time I, have le I had leukemia, my second time being able to get the bone marrow transplant. Anyway, I went in and all of a sudden he's just telling a story, I remember this kid. But last time I saw him, he had no cheeks and he was completely gaunt and, and we all feared the worst, you know. And here he is in the sunshine, he's completely tan, he's got a mohawk, a green mohawk, and he's like got these big cheeks. And, and, uh, and he's like, and I went into that room and, and the, the transfusion was successful, and, um, and here I am, you know, today. I got a transplant that day that saved my life. Hayden! And out of 60,000 people, we found this kid in the middle of those stories, you know? And it wasn't set up or anything. We brought him on stage, and, uh, and to me, that's the highlight because, or it represents the kind of highlight that is a highlight to me. Because at the end of the day, all we want to do is, is feel you, as Janglin says. And we want to we wanna, we wanna transmit and communicate with, with everyone. Um, not postured as rock stars on stage, but, but together. And uh, so that's, that's it. Oh, yes we are.